Good day and welcome to the channel. In this short video, we are going to provide a thorough explanation of how to unbox and do a complete setup, including the iDRAC and an explanation of all of the major internal components and what you can change and what you can't on a server. Basically, it's a newbie's guide to physical servers. We're doing this because one of our own techs explained he hadn't seen a physical server set up before. And that gets to a good point. While this is a Dell R660XS server, this is completely unsponsored. So if you find this introduction to server building useful, the big thumbs up would be super appreciated. So the first thing is this is a terrible place to open this up because it's way too small. You need a big area to open up a server, but it's what I've got right this moment. So that's what we're gonna use. Front bezel, power cords, number of useless manuals. We ordered the rack kit because we need to put this into our server rack. It's the rails. Just pull the foam blocking out. The first thing was, if the operating system was licensed from Dell, the key would be here, but it's not. Uh, we have our own licenses. Uh, this unit has two 1.2 terabyte 10K SAS drives in them. And if you've never seen this, pretty easy, just standard hot swap stuff. You can pop those out. And we say hot swap because this is using the PERC or PERC H750-5 controller. And uh, th these are going to be rated uh, as a mirror, so we'd be able to swap one uh, live. We have extra bays that we could add drives into if we wanted, but we don't need them. It has a VGA port, USB-C, and USB Type-A power. Uh, this is to remove it from the rack. You pop this and just pull it. Let's take a look at the inside. Just unscrew that. Well, it's not even unscrew, it's just loosened in it. That slides off. If it's orange or blue, it's something that you can touch. Uh, let's look at these fans, for instance. These fans, it looks like there's a little power button here, but that's not what that is. Um, you can just grab this, put your thumb in, and lift it out. It's a field replaceable unit, an FRU. You put this down, and you might think, well, that's a button. No, it's not. What that is is to make that header squish onto that header. So, boom, there we go, push that in. This is your back plane. The back plane is what connects the back of these drive cages to the motherboard. And the back plane can be flashed. It will have firmware, but it can also be changed. So what we do is just pry this a bit and push that forward with your thumbs and then lift it out. And you can see the back plane here. Just put that back. Here we have cable management. You'll see it's blue again, so it's something you are supposed to touch. You can get in and out of there if you need to. This little piece just lifts straight out. It's just a cowling, just a cover. And you can see here all of the headers. And there's a whole pile of these headers for devices that your system may or may not have. This is a 1U. As we said, it's a pizza box, as we call it. It's just a, a single unit. But you can get the, the probably the same motherboard in a system that's uh, as much as a 4U. Uh, so if you've got something with a lot of drives, this same board could get used. Now, you notice here, this little blue tab. Yes, I could pull on this and lift this out. This just slides back in. Here's your CPU. Actually, this is just the cooling solution, which is just your heat sink. The CPU is below. And over here is a knockout, which is just a cover that this just pulls off and you could add a second CPU. Because this is only a domain controller, we only need one uh, CPU. Now here we have memory slots and you can see there's a pile of them, but you can't just randomly populate them. On the back of the cover, you'll see that there's instructions on how to memory population, on how to populate these. You don't just jam them in randomly. Next thing are the PCI slots. These are PCI 16 by 16, one, two, three, and you think, that's it? Nope, there's also a PCI uh, slot here, and there's also one right here. Now look at this, there's these little blue marks again. So you can grab and just wiggle this out. There we go, straight out. And you'll see here, there's another PCI by 16 slot, and this is just a riser card that goes into the PCI slot there that you can't see, but trust me, is there. And to put this back in, just line this up at the back, back here, and squish it back down in. There we go. Then here, there's a little toggle that just lifts up, but nothing much seems to happen. Why is that? That's because this is a lock for this card. And you might think, well, that's part of the motherboard. No, it's actually an expansion card. See the slot here? And this one is a four port Broadcom one gig, well, four by one gig network card, but you could put lots of other things in here. And to get this out, you would 
pull that screw out, lift this out, then you would lift this gate and you would then slide this out. Let's look at the back. So the unit ships with two nicks uh, built right on the board and uh, there's also a, an iDRAC which is the um, little computer that runs all the time uh, whether the computer is powered up or not, as long as it has power plugged in, the iDRAC can manage it. So it can power it up, it can power it down, you can load an operating system, you can do whatever you want. But it also, in my case, we've added in the Broadcom 4 port, all one gig. This is just going to be a domain controller, nothing exciting. Dual power supplies, again, orange is a field replaceable unit, so you just pop these out. And the bezel for the front just makes it pretty. And if you're in a high security environment, you can lock it as well. Now here we have an ISO for our Windows Server 2022 and uh, how do we get that to be bootable? Well you just download a piece of software called Rufus. We've already downloaded it, it doesn't really require an install, you just run it. Uh, so let's show you how to make a bootable USB from this ISO. Take a USB stick and plug it into your computer and you can see Rufus found it. Then select the ISO that's the ISO. Yep, it's a Windows standard installation. GPT is correct. Target system, yep, that's all happy. You can call it whatever you want. I'll leave it out that name. NTFS is fine. And we just click start and it will make a bootable USB stick. Uh, power, you only need one power. Keyboard and mouse. Now let's take our USB stick and plug it in and press the power button. Now this will take a minute to do a boot up. This does not happen near as fast as it does on a PC because it needs to actually check all of the hardware. For fun, we'll go into F2 and just take a look at the BIOS. Now if you want to get into the RAID controller, you have to get into the lifecycle controller. So on boot up you just press F10 over and over again. Hardware configuration, configuration wizards, RAID configuration, and there's your disks. This is the wizard. So we're just going to leave this as it is. Let's click cancel. Go back. Advanced hardware, device settings, and let's go into the RAID controller. Click on the virtual disks. There they are. Grind it away, 46%. Mirroring right now, even though there's nothing on them. Physical disk management. And you can see there are the two disks. We can click on any one of them, and it'll give us all kinds of things, including the serial number and things that we can do. For instance, if one of the disks we think is a problem, we could force it to blink, and then we'd be able to figure out which one's there. So, so from here we're going to load the operating system, pretty much the same as all of the other operating systems we've worked with. Then we have to run Windows Update and also go to Dell.com and pull down uh, updates. And we do that using the SUU. However, to get the SUU, the Server Update Manager, to work, you probably want to get the Dell Support Assistant so we can figure out exactly which file we've got. And to get that to work, you also need to have um, Microsoft Edge WebView 2, so we'll download that. You'll also need Visual C++ for the SEU, so you might as well get that out of the way. I think it would come with it, but it doesn't. Then run the SEU ISO and you want to right click on the SUU launcher and run as admin. I don't think you actually have to admin, but yeah. anyways, this takes quite a long time to do the check. Uh, look for any differences and anything that's old. Put a check mark and click apply to update them. And you're going to have to run Windows Update and the SUU several times. Now let's get to the iDRAC. The iDRAC is a little piece of hardware that runs off of the motherboard that's a completely separate computer that lets you run this out of band. You can power it up, power it down, install operating systems, whatever. Anyway, so load the iDRAC software, as you see here. And the iDRAC really just hosts a little web server that you can use to manage the server, whether it's powered up, powered down, whatever. And as you can see, the iDRAC is a little computer, runs on a separate board, 
on the back of the motherboard and it lets you manage this fully. Look, you can even get a virtual console and see what's on the screen, which right now is itself. <laughs> but you can manage this, you can power this computer off, you can boot it up as long as this computer has electricity and it's got the iDRAC plugged in with a valid IP address, you can run this thing remotely. Fantastic tool. And then go to the back and plug in a network cable to the iDRAC port. iDRAC settings. Let's configure it. Configure IPv4. And you do not want your iDRAC to use DHCP because it needs to be there in an emergency. Now you think you're stuck. You don't have a username and password. Well, the default is root username and the password is Calvin. C-A-L-V-I-N. However, in some systems, they actually put codes right here. Back of the pullout card. However, I'm pretty sure ours is root and Calvin. Yep, bingo. Okay, so you saw we've got the operating system installed. We have updated it using the Dell SUU, the server update utility. Uh, we have had to download a few drivers by ourselves, but it's, it pretty much worked. And we've also, much more importantly, got the iDRAC utility installed, and uh, that's going great. And uh, now we just have to wait for this to finish off. So after this, what we'll do is run Server Manager, change the name of it, of course, but that isn't the point of this video. This video is, again, just the introduction, a newbie's introduction to Dell server hardware, which is really the same as HP server hardware and so on and so forth. By the way, HP calls the iDRAC an ILO, integrated lights out. Very handy tool, but I digress. So hey, if you found this video useful, big thumbs up would be super appreciated. Subscribes also appreciated. And if you have any questions or concerns, you can always get a hold of us at www.urtech. That's www.urtech.ca. Or you can leave a question or a comment below. And if we don't get back to you, somebody else will because on YouTube, yeah, everybody's got an opinion. Thanks and have a good one. Bye.